Hello, so today we will start from anisotropic etching. So in the last class we have talked about isotropic etching where in the all the directions the material was etched with the same rate right and now we will see that where the directionality of the crystal uh, arrangement of silicon will have an effect in its etching. So in that case we will use actually KOH like KOH is a very popular uh, anisotropic agent. So mostly used uh, one of the mostly used uh, agent is 30 percent KOH at 70 to 80 degree centigrade. Another agent is EDP at 115 degree centigrade and then we have also tetramethyl amino uh, ammonium hydroxide which is also called TMH and at 70 to 90 degree centigrade. So we can use all these three chemicals for etching silicon but uh, there are other chemicals also which you can use but these are mostly used actually um, KOH and TMH are the most popular one for uh, silicon anisotropic etching. Silicon etching here uh, like uh, these etchants are dependent on the direction okay. So what happens is along the 100 or 110 or 111 the etching rate is not same. So typical values of relating etching rate is given here as you can see that 111 is to 100 is to 110 is 1 is to 400 is to 600 and that difference is pretty huge. So as we know from our crystal uh, structure itself that in the 110 direction one atom is uh, connected with the bulk with only one bond right. So this is like more probable case like or the most probable case where the atom can easily get removed from the surface. So in that case the etching rate is highest like 600 whereas 100 it is medium like 400 and for triple one case one atom is connected to the bulk with three different uh, bonds. So it is the most stable uh, plane and in that case it is only one. So it means that if I etch it let us say for uh, 1 hour if I get 1 nanometer for 111 plane for 100 and 110 we will get 400 nanometer and 600 nanometer of etching. But what we need to remember here that though the etching rate is pretty small but still the 111 plane also get etched it is not 0. As I am saying that anisotropic etching what does it mean that you can see from this picture there you can see that. So this surface is 100 surface means it is normal at the 100 direction as it starts etching as it starts etching then this plane let us say if I want to draw the surface here then this surface also will be 100 surfaces right and these surfaces also will have higher etching rate but before that itself 111 plane comes. And from our uh, previous slides we have seen that the 111 plane uh, makes an uh, angle of 54.74 degree almost with the 100 plane. So in that case this is the this angle is 54 degrees and 54 degree angle and in this 111 plane the agent will move very slowly because once the 111 plane is open then the etching rate in this direction goes very slowly right etching rate in this direction goes very slowly. So that is why this surface opens up and how much is the depth accordingly you can form uh, this kind of U shape or uh, like V shape pattern where the bottom edges both the edges can merge also depending on the opening like here it will merge at a longer distance like here it will merge at a longer distance right. So it after going even more uh, in that uh, silicon bulk then it will uh, match both the si surfaces. But here it has merged even much before that because the opening is pretty small and this region here are the masking layer which will not get etched by the KOH etching. And if we see uh, after etching if we see it uh, in the under the microscope then we will it will look something like this where this is corresponding to this image is corresponding to 
this opening which is the cross sectional view and this region will be the flat region where I can uh, where we can easily see the light reflected from the top surface also light get reflected easily but this black regions are this slopes right these black regions are these slopes where the light is not represented so it is like this so from the uh, bottom the light is easily reflected but from this region light gets reflected to some other place so this looks black okay I will show the real uh, picture in the next slide and then so in this case you will uh, you will you can see the bottom um, bottom side of the sample which is open and uh, which has a lesser in dimension from the top opening whereas here you will see only the line because all the 111 planes have merged from all the sides the 111 planes have merged so you will see only this kind of straight line and point to be noted here that you see that the length of the line is also small right it is not the complete length complete length is complete length is this much but here the length of the line is small because here also we have 111 planes open because like from this opening it is coming as 111 plane and these two sides also it will go as 111 plane and here now we can see the photograph or uh, real photograph of the etched uh, surface right there you can see that this is the top surface this is the bottom surface and this is the top surface which both are reflective because the light is coming from the uh, from uh, directly gets reflected from the, the uh, bottom surface as well as the top surface but the slopes are black these black regions are the slope where from the light comes here and then reflected in some other direction so this looks black right and here uh, and the dimension of the bottom surface is also much lesser than the opening that also we can see and this dimension actually can be calculated from uh, the geometry from this image so that we will come to, uh, we will discuss later now this graph is showing that how 100 plane of the silicon uh, etching rate uh, etching rate in 100 plane changes with KOH concentration so as we can see here according to this graph that for lower concentration we have a very high etching rate right for lesser concentration we have a very high etching rate it, it does not change much for uh, till uh, certain uh, concentration but after that is drops down very fast right so con below 20 percent concentration surface becomes actually very rough and insoluble uh, precipitation also are formed so if it is below 20 percent then the etching rate is very high it's very aggressive rate etching and in that case uh, because of aggressive etching the surface also becomes very rough right so the rms roughness or the uh, if we calculate the roughness of the film will be very high and in that case some uh, reaction product will be there which will be which will in uh, like precipitate because that those are insoluble in the solution so how KOH etching exactly works so H2O has a high dielectric constant about 80 and it polarizes KOH and it so it becomes K plus and OH minus ions like it ionizes to into its uh, cation and anion now silicon is oxidized by reacting with this OH minus ions right if KOH concentration is increased the fraction of OH minus is inhibited and the reaction rate falls because as we have a very smaller concentration more number of uh, ions we will get whereas if we add more and more KOH then the ions uh, will be lesser like the K plus and OH minus ions will be lesser so in that case the reaction rate will fall now we can add isopropyl alcohol or IPA that also reduce OH minus formation and hence the H rate reduces this is due to the lower dielectric constant of the IPA and another point important point is that H rate goes up with increase in KOH temperature so if we increase the temperature of the solution then the etching rate also increases so the po important point to note here is this concentration is one kind of control which we have which we can uh, select and accordingly can choose how much etching rate we want then adding IP is another kind of control which you can uh, which we can add and uh, in specific concentration and then we can control the etching rate temperature is also another control knob or another handle for that 
and why we need to age, uh, control the age rate because in some kind of application we will need very small etching very small amount of etching let us say 2 nanometer 3 nanometer etching or uh, let us say 10 nanometer etching and very uh, fine etching like the surface should be very small uh, surface should be very smooth. So, in that case we can use very slow etching rate so that the surface will be smooth or in some cases where we need like uh, we need to etch probably a 1 micron or 1000 nanometer right and in that case initially for the for let us say for first 900 nanometer we can go with very high etching rate keeping the concentration higher. So, in that case surface uh, will be etched very uh, like very fast and it will be a little bit of rough uh, but after that the uh, later on we can use even uh, higher etching rate or you can uh, use IPA to reduce the etching rate and accordingly we can generate smooth surfaces. So, the final surface will be much smoother and also we will we can uh, finish the process faster. Now, in this graph we are showing different effect of uh, different, uh, different parameters like temperature, concentration and uh, different planes etcetera and IPA also on, uh, on uh, like uh, on KOH etching. So, in this case all the cases if we see the first case is 100 plane with 20 percent of KOH right and 250 ml of 20 percent of KOH and 250 ml of IPA and this is how with temperature the etching rate changes and this you see this is the uh, this is plotted with 1 by T. So, with temperature the etching rate actually with increasing temperature the etching rate actually increases because in this direction 1 by T is increasing that means T is decreasing. So, as we are decreasing the temperature etching rate falls right. Now, 100 plane with uh, 20 percent KOH and 20, 250 ml of IPA has the lowest possible uh, etching, etching rate. Then 110 plane with the same KOH concentration. So, then we can see that 110 plane have the uh, higher uh, etching rate than 100 plane right with the same OH concentration and same amount of IPA. Next case is where we have the same 100 plane and same percentage of KOH, but we are not adding any IPA. So, as we discussed earlier that adding IPA reduces the OH minus ions in the solution. So, now we have more number of OH minus ions in the solution. So, this will oxidize the uh, silicon even faster. So, the etching rate is even higher. So, etching rate is uh, not only higher than 100 plane for that condition, it is also higher than now 110 plane uh, which was etched using IPA. And if we now use the uh, same condition for the 110 plane like the same 20 percent KOH without IPA then 110 plane also have now the highest possible etching rate. It is higher than all the other cases. So, there you can see that KOH concentration is uh, already a parameter what we discussed in the previous slide, but the IPA as well as the temperature uh, and the directionality or the uh, which uh, direction we are etching then all of these are different different parameters for controlling etching rate. Now, in that case actually one thing to uh, I would like to mention that is IPA we can select that whether we would like to add or not temperature we can decide, but usually the substrate we are uh, bound by the design right what kind of if the uh, design or my device needs 100 plane then we have to use 100 plane. If it is uh, 111 plane then we need to use 111 plane because there are different parameters uh, which will also depend on this crystallinity. So, that is not on our hand much, but we can select different kind of temperature and uh, KOH percentage to control the etching rate. So, what are the different reactions what actually happens while uh, silicon is etched by KOH? First of all the OH minus ions oxidizes the silicon at and it forms this silicon hydride element. Now, simultaneously water is reduced also like OH minus and H plus is also there. So, what is reduced leading to evolution of H 2. 
the complex silicon further actually reacts with hydroxyl to form a soluble, soluble uh, silicon complex which is silicon dioxide with 2 OH minus ions right. So, this is the final product with very uh, with easily, easily dissolves in the solution and so the silicon gets etched. So, this is the final uh, reaction a silicon plus hydroxyl ions which are coming from the KOH and water it uh, you will get this uh, dissolvable reaction product and with that hydrogen. From silicon we move to silicon dioxide etch rate with KOH and silicon dioxide etching rate with KOH is also very much important because most of the cases we have first of all silicon has always uh, some native oxide layer on top which is uh, silicon dioxide because it gets exposed to the moisture and uh, then the dangling bonds easily reacts with the uh, water and it forms kind of a native oxide layer. This silicon dioxide also is used as the masking layer. So, in the in the previous one of the slides one of like this slide we have shown this masking layer right. So, which is which will not allow the uh, silicon to get etched below it right and this is this can be actually silicon dioxide. So, we can put silicon dioxide on in some uh, according to our design. So, how we can do that using lithography that we will discuss in, in some other class, but the point is here that silicon dioxide can act as an as an oxide uh, as an edge stop or the protective layer or the masking layer. As I was saying that even though the masking layer have for the masking layer or the protective layer the etching rate is small but still there is some amount of etching. So, like here you can see that the silicon dioxide have a etching rate of like uh, below 70 or to 80 nanometer for different different KOH concentration and for different uh, KOH concentration the etching rate varies, but it is below 70 to 80 nanometer. Now, if we go back and see it for KOH uh, for silicon then we see that the etching rate here is given in terms of microns per hour is you can see that this is like uh, 40 or 50 microns per hour whereas for SiO2 or silicon dioxide it is 60 70 nanometer per hour. So, the etching rate for SiO2 is almost 1000 times smaller than the silicon and this is a very important uh, point because we can use we can use uh, silicon uh, dioxide as an protective layer and let us say if we are etching for 1 micron in, in that period in that time 1 micron uh, of silicon let us say we need to etch it for uh, let us say we need to etch it for 10 minutes for 1 micron of silicon etching. Then in that 10 minutes SiO2 will get etched only only like 5 6 nanometer right only 5 6 nanometer of SiO2 will get etched in that 10 minute. So, that much of oxide layer is good enough to protect the silicon layer because SiO2 layer will protect the silicon layer until it it uh, by itself it uh, gets etched by the KOH right. So, if we deposit a like uh, 100 nanometer thick silicon dioxide layer. So, let us go to let us go back to this picture again. So, this is let us silicon dioxide and I am etching uh, about 1 micron of uh, silicon and for that let us say we need for that we need uh, 10 minutes of time then in that case this silicon dioxide can be of let us say uh, 50 nanometer or 100 nanometer also because in that one hour this will get etched only only by 5 6 nanometer. So, this thickness also will get reduced let us say this will come to some place this will come to some place like this right little bit lesser the thickness of what it started with, but ultimately it will still it will still protect this region, it will still protect this region. So, the silicon will not get etched right. So, SiO2 has a small uh, much smaller almost 1000 times smaller etching rate under KOH etching compared to silicon. Now, the next way to control the etching is boron doping. In case of boron doping what happens is initially let us say if it is 10 to the power 18 uh, like uh, 10 to the power 18 atoms per centimeter cube then in that case we have the 
usual etching rate of KOH like without doping or with doping it does not matter much. But as we increase the doping rate like 10 to the power 19 to 10 to the power 20 then the etching rate drops down drastically. You can see here that this is normalized with respect to the maximum etching rate and there it stays for at 1 for cert, uh, till certain uh, doping concentration but after that it drops down drastically. So, we can also we can also just dope boron in certain region to reduce the etching rate in those regions. So, then in that case that will act as a masking layer. And now we will see that how we can use this KOH etching for creating different different geometries and we will use the H top layer also for creating this kind of geometries. So, let us assume that this is a uh, silicon wafer uh, like half, uh, half of the silicon wafer you can see this half circle right and there we have three different opening. Here we have a small opening then we have a little bigger opening and then again we have a small opening right even smaller than this uh, the first opening. Now in this case the first case if we uh, the cross sectional view is drawn in the uh, bottom figure here you can see this is the cross sectional this is the cross sectional view of the same geometries here. This is the, the uh, this red side is the etching like the masking layer and we have etched the KOH we have etched the silicon from this direction from the bottom right from the bottom and then this is the hole opening and this is the bottom hole. So, let me just write down here. So, this is let us say if it is 100 plane then this is the angle which is 54.7 degree. 54.7 degrees all of these angles are 54.7 degrees. All of these angles are 54.7 degrees. Now with this angle here the silicon wafer thickness is such that that I will get a true hole. So, this is completely so light can pass from the top to bottom right this is a through hole. Then in the next case the hole size is even bigger the opening is even bigger. So, there also I should get a uh, through hole, but what we have done in the other side or the uh, opposite side where we are etching we are etching from the bottom side right and on the opposite side or the top side we have dope boron in this region. So, as we have dope boron the etching rate in this region becomes the smallest. So, the KOH will not be able to etch this region of silicon. This region of silicon will not be etched by KOH etching. So, this becomes like a thin membrane. This becomes like a thin membrane. So, if we have let us say uh, 500 uh, micron thick of uh, silicon wafer and then this region can be like uh, 50 or 100 nanometer which is uh, boron uh, doping has happened and or even little higher let us say 100 or 200 nanometer. So, in that region we get a uh, very thin like uh, 500 micron nanometer or 1 micron uh, thick membrane which will not get etched. Whereas, this is the smallest opening hole. So, here both the sides meet if much before it can reach the uh, bottom side of the plate. So, this through hole this membrane and this V shape hole all are made using the same KOH etching by just using a H top layer here and different kind of hole opening. And this different different geometries like membrane through holes or even this V shape wall have different different applications which uh, some of uh, some of which we will see in uh, the in the next module. Um, but this uh, like one one kind of uh, like one kind of application for the membrane is this is very much useful for pressure sensors. So, we can we can connect a pressure port here can connect a pressure pressure port here like this and then if the if the air pressure is applied here then this pressure will build up and that will make the membrane to bend like this that will make the membrane to bend like this. And then we can uh, we can measure the deflection of the membrane by some characterization technique by like optical or electrical and can measure that how much is the deflection and also how much is the pressure of the 
like uh, pressure of the chamber uh, which I want to measure. So that uh, these things we will discuss in the uh, in the next module. So this is another application. So we have seen in the module one that uh, we have used cantilevers for different kind of uh, sensors, right? Now how you can make a cantilever? We can make the cantilever such that that the only in uh, using the cantilever geometry, this region, this uh, violet color region or pink color region is only boron doped. So this region will not get etched, but all the sides will get etched. Now all the sides as it gets etched, cantilever with is not much. So the material or, or the liquid can go below it. So like this is the cantilever, let us say this is the cantilever and then uh, this is only uh, doped with boron. So this will not get etched, but all the sides are open. Now from this side the liquid can like sink in and can etch the bottom side of the um, of the silicon of the bottom of the cantilever which is used, uh, like the normal silicon because the boron doping only will be in top few uh, nanometers like few hundred nanometers or such like that. Uh, so it will not go at the bulk right it will not go in the bulk so that bulk silicon can get easily etched. So ultimately we will have let us say these regions the other regions are also uh, boron dope so this will also not get etched but from bottom of the from bottom of the uh, cantilever the material will get etched so now this will be like a free cantilever this will be so now this will be like a free cantilever it can easily bend because it has a vacancy or empty uh, empty space below it so it can easily bend and this uh, kind of device we can use for different kind of sensors thank you